So both for purposes of knowing what you can be asked about on a certified ethical hacker exam, and also for understanding how to target a malware attack in the real world in a practical situation, there's four types of malware that I'll break down here for you over the next several slides and show you examples of how they work and what they are. Trojans, backdoors, viruses, and worms. And for each, I'm going to give you some explanation of what it does, potentially how it's different from other types of malware, because sometimes there's not a whole lot of distinction or difference. Sometimes there's a piece of malware that overlaps all of these things, has some attributes of each. And certainly attacking the target, when you would select this type of malware to attack a target based on your goals. The common attributes that I mentioned are that all of these are code. All of these are software, some type of software that's going to run. That doesn't mean it's C or Visual Basic or PHP or Java or whatever type of real-time or pre-compiled. It doesn't mean that at all. It's all going to be some type of code. may not even be really executable. It may just be something that's interpreted by a service or a process, but it's some type of software. There's a difference between malware and some type of physical compromise, like, for example, a key sniffer or a keyboard sniffer. They're all intended for malicious use. The mal in malware stands for malicious. So all of these pieces of malware I'm going to talk about are, are intended for some malicious use. However, some are crossovers where there are some tools that you're going to see that could be used for malicious use or legitimate use in a data center or, or an enterprise. And countermeasures typically are known for all malware types. So there's plenty of ways to block Trojans and viruses, plenty of ways to stop viruses, backdoors, worms, all that stuff. But that's not always the case as far as not consistent. Sometimes we've got an inconsistent deployment. Sometimes the systems fail, the controls fail. They're oftentimes based on signature files and the signature files may be out of date. The firewall or, or switch or gateway may be responsible for scanning for malware and it may fail or it may crash or it may just let some stuff through or you may go around that during your attack and simply tunnel through and not allow the malware detection system to actually find the malware in the first place. So there's all kinds of great countermeasures out there but they're not always effective, which is why you're learning about this, because it's always worth giving this kind of attack a try, especially if you do the footprinting correctly, know what might be expected or not expected, and also potentially you can compromise some of the countermeasures out there. You might be able to actually get users to disable a virus scanner or figure out how to shut down a firewall malware scanner long enough to get something through. Any of that kind of stuff is useful. So remember, these types of malware attacks do work in conjunction with all the other types of footprinting, enumeration, and compromise that you've got so far and that will have in the future.